What's up, everybody? And welcome to How To with Ann Malam. It's great to have you here. I'm so excited to have Rob Stein on our call today. Let me tell you a little bit about Rob. Rob is one of North America's leading real estate educators, a mindset coach, a multiple business owner, former professional bodybuilder, husband, and father. Rob is also the creator of Impossible to Fail Framework and has coached and spoken to more than 20,000 people over the course of his career on mindset and performance. And Rob's how-to is how to guarantee your success in anything with three simple steps. I'm pretty excited to dive into this, you guys. Rob, welcome to the podcast. Good to see you. Right on, and Great to see you again. Thanks so much for having me on. Of course. Why don't we just tell people a little bit about your background? You have a pretty diverse background, especially the bodybuilder part stuck out to me and and yeah. how you got into helping people and let it let us know how you got to where you are today. And then we'll jump into the the three steps I'm excited to hear about. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah. I mean, I started out in education. I'm a musician by nature. So I got my bachelor's in trumpet performance and a master's in education. And I quickly realized you know, I believe I am blessed with the the skill and talent of teaching and speaking. And I love teaching, but I did not love teaching public school. Uh, I found teaching was the least of what I got to do, <laughs> actually. So um, I built my first business in music composition and publishing, knowing I wanted to uh, always contribute teaching people that want to learn. And I was able to build that up over about the course of eight years to about five times my teaching salary, quit the public workforce, got into full-time entrepreneurship, um, around the same time is when I really hit a low point in my health and I was quite overweight and out of shape and just through the, the right blueprint and the right framework. It was actually the P90X program with Tony Horton. I don't know if you remember that one, of course, but, of course. Yeah, kind of revolutionized the home workout industry. So, uh, I did it twice and 180 days later, I lost about 80 pounds, had the, the after picture, the beach body and got really into that aspect of health and fitness uh, eventually got in the gym, started putting on some muscle. And- I, I actually want to pause you right there because it's yeah. a great moment to talk about the steps. Yes. Like it's where people get, and it's just like, you just have to, if you, if you're, if you don't know anything about fitness and you don't know anything about anything like this program, P90X was like, just do what we tell you to, as yeah. long as you're willing to show up and do what we tell you to, you're going to see the results, but you can't skip the workouts. You can't do you don't have to know anything about anything. Just follow the expert. And I think it's such a great example, again, where people get stuck and they get yep. just like continue to show up and do the yep. thing. Yeah, you're 100 percent right. And that's actually what leads into the cornerstone of my impossible to fail framework mm-hmm. is it all starts with getting the blueprint. Now, I was not uh, metabolically blessed <laughs> growing up. I used to get made fun of as a kid for being fat. Um, you know, I don't have a fast metabolism. I was not an athlete. Marching band was my primary sport. And I always just assumed my body was not capable of looking the way I wanted it to. Yeah. Other people have it. I don't, whatever it is, I don't have it. Mm -hmm. And through following that, I didn't know how to eat. I didn't know how to train. I literally couldn't even lift my feet off the ground for a pull up Mm -hmm. on day one. I was passing out after like five to seven push ups. But, uh, over the course of the first 90 days, I did the training part. I didn't do the nutrition part. So after the first 90 days, I kind of had some results, you know, loose outline of the midsection, a little bit stronger, but I didn't have that after picture because I wasn't following the blueprint because the blueprint included the nutrition. Follow the blueprint second 90 days and boom, that's where the magic happened. And that was really the first time I ever learned the beauty of following a very detailed blueprint and getting incredible results that I never thought I was capable of in a very short amount of time. Yeah. And again, I, I love that because you, and, and losing weight and fitness is something that's such a great topic to talk yeah. about this on because yeah. we've all either been there or know several people yep. who have been trying to make changes in their health, fitness, aesthetic, something, and it doesn't work. And I, and I watch people and I'm like, why are you doing this thing? Because you you heard it's like I just need to get on the elliptical machine for an hour, and I'm like, yeah. But you're trying to build muscle. That's not that that is going to do nothing. And now you've put an an hour in here, and now you don't have time to to lift weights. So it's just like, yeah. fine. It's like with money, with anything, find somebody where you and say what do, you know about this stuff. Tell me what to do, how to do, and your job is to show up and do it. You yeah. don't have to become an expert in it. You need to find somebody who is an expert 
learn from them and do what you're told. That's 100% right. And in business and entrepreneurship, um, there is such a, I'm going to try to figure this out on my own mentality. You know, when people go to college, I think because it's ingrained in our society that that is a, a, a path of a natural progression, mm-hmm. people say, well, I need to learn how to develop a skill to have this career. So obviously I need to learn how to do it. So I'm going to go to college and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to learn how to do it. Versus when we start a new skill set in entrepreneurship, and a fraction of that for a coaching program or a one-to-one coach, people say, nope, I'm going to, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. And so when I got into real estate, after I built my first business, after I got into bodybuilding and I decided I wanted to diversify my income streams a little bit, as soon as I became a real estate investor, I hired a coach. As soon as I became a real estate agent, I didn't mess around. I hired a coach right away within two years, I earned a spot in the top 5% of real estate agents nationwide in terms of sales volume and income. Then I decided to start a team. So again, I hired the best coach I could find in starting a team. Within month seven, I had my first $100,000 month as a team leader. There's no way I could have accomplished that if I was on my own. So as I progressed through different endeavors, I've just had the the mindset of, I'm going to get the blueprint, And here are the three steps and implement it with massive action, relentless consistency and time. And as long as you're implementing the right thing, it is literally impossible to fail. And that's where my framework came up. Yeah. So if I'm hearing you right, it's like, again, let's go back to the fitness thing because it it resonates with everybody. Yeah. Right. So it's like, cool. There's somebody who's saying, I want to, you know, build muscle mass. I want to create muscle, whatever. And they're on the elliptical and they're there for an hour a day. And I'm like, cool. You got the time thing figured out. You've carved out the time and you're showing up. You're just doing the wrong thing. And I see that happen a lot. And again, you can take any area or whatever. You've got people spending and then they get frustrated, Rob. So now this person's been on the elliptical for an hour for three months and sees no results. So what happens? They quit. Stop. Yeah. This my body type just doesn't, you know, work. I'm I'm not meant to. I can't. I, I there's nothing I can do to lose weight you know, they create this narrative that that's just not, there's something wrong with them, not going to happen when really the thing that they were doing was the wrong thing to begin with. So let's, let's dive in a little bit more to that because I I think most people, well, I shouldn't even say that, but I do think that's a big problem where people are willing, they're like, I'm, I'm here, I'm willing to put in the time. They just actually don't know what to do and they end up doing the wrong thing. That's right. You're 100% right. So the impossible to fail framework is right here. The cornerstone is get the blueprint. The blueprint is the coaching, the program, the mastermind, the the track to accomplishing what it is you're trying to accomplish from someone that A, has done exactly what you're trying to do, and B, has a great track record of teaching others how to do the same. And those two are really important, right? I'm not going to hire a financial advisor that's not wealthy. I'm not going to hire a personal trainer that's out of shape. So you hire someone or you engage with someone that has the track record. They've accomplished exactly what you're trying to do. The benefit there is that you know their methods work. Number two, they must have a great track record of teaching others how to do the same thing. As an educator with a master's degree and over 20 years of experience in the educational field, I think we've all had, like I'm sure, Anne, you've probably had a bad teacher at some Mm -hmm. point in your life, right? So I yep. Yeah. So I I think being successful at something doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be really good at teaching others how to be successful at that. There is a skill set to teaching. So if you find someone that has accomplished what you're trying to do and has a great track record of teaching others, now you've aligned with someone that you know you can learn the right steps from. Yeah. When, When people say there's no shortcut, there's no secret, that's a complete falsehood. The shortcut, the secret is getting educated. Right. From someone, because then you're avoiding mistakes. I mean, you still have to do the work, but the beauty of it is now you're taking for sure the fastest, most direct path to accomplishing your goal. And if you could get to a spot walking or taking a plane, which one would you want to do? Right. Of course, you'd want to take the fastest path. So you get the education. And then the three steps are massive action, relentless consistency and time. So in the instance that you brought up of, and I did the same thing, by the way, when I started trying to lose weight, I was like, I'm going to run. Because running and eating salads is just like what you want to do, right? I didn't want a runner's body. I wanted a beach body, but I just assumed running was the thing and it didn't work. So in that instance of me or the example that you used of the elliptical, there are massive action, relentless consistency and time, but no blueprint. 
right. <laughs> they're running 100 miles an hour in the wrong direction. <laughs> right. So you oh, start again, the I, I, yeah. that is the fastest way to quit because, again, you get you're like, I'm putting so much effort. Yeah. And just, it's like saving your money when people are like, oh my, I'm working so hard and I'm saving my money and it's not. And it's like, because you're not investing your money. Right. What are you trying to get to? And, and I will validate Rob here because guys, when I was starting back on my feet, my first big entrepreneurial uh, journey, I was 26, almost 27 years old. And I was like, oh my God, I, I want to build this nonprofit. Like this is what I'm going to do with my life. Well, I didn't know any entrepreneurs. So who did I ask? Who did I talk to about it? My mom, my dad, my bosses who were working w 2 salaries and every no one could possibly fathom that I was going to start a nonprofit, build it, be able to pay myself and hire people. And so people, of course, this isn't going to work. I don't think you should do this, you know, because I wasn't talking to people who had done it before. So fortunately, I had enough belief in myself to ignore all of that. But you can you can easily see why people end up, you know, they feel stupid or feel like they're making the wrong decision when we're asking people who are telling us, you know, people that we look up to, you know, adult figures, you know, whatever that like, nope, don't don't do that. But really, you know, you're asking the wrong person. Yeah. You got to surround yourself with the right people and ask the necessary people for for the input. Right. Uh, something to ask your parents. If you have a question about being a parent, your parent would be the right person to ask, but if you're but if if you're asking someone who has not an entrepreneurial bone in their body about starting a business, they're going to advise you from their lens of scarcity, of fear, right. and of a lack of experience. And I noticed that when I got into real estate, um, my first business was in music composition and publishing. And as a teacher, you know, teachers typically don't have much of an entrepreneurial mindset. Like when I told my fellow teachers. I'm quitting my teaching job because I built my business and I'm going to do that full time. It was overwhelming. Rob, why would you do that? You've got tenure. You know, maybe if you work here for 30 years, you could make like 70 grand a year. You've got health benefits. Like, why would you do that? They just couldn't understand. When I started hanging out with other entrepreneurs going to real estate conferences and I was just getting started, I was so nervous. I was so nervous to go. I was so nervous that because I'm hanging out the first time I'm in the room with like millionaires couple billionaires, people doing really big things in real estate. And here I am like brand new. And I was so worried about when they would ask me what I'm trying to do. And I, oh, I'm trying to do this and that. I'm trying to build a real estate company, trying to build a portfolio. They'd be like, oh, you little green real estate baby, you know, that, that get out of here, you know? And as soon yeah. as I told them, every single person said, that's amazing. You can do it. I've done it. Here's my card. Let me know how I can help. Right. Because they all have that experience. And so when you're surrounded by the right people, you want to learn how to do what they've done. You got to learn how to think how they think, take the actions that they've taken. Surrounding yourself with the right people is 100% essential to elevate your mindset and accomplish your goals faster. Well, and guys, what you'll also learn is most people will opine on anything that you ask them to. So it's it's like if I ask you like, oh, what do you think about the economy? Someone will comment on it and someone will, you know, whatever. If I'm like, oh, what do you think I should do about this problem? Most people will give you their opinion when, frankly, some people should just say, I'm not the right person to ask about that. Right. It's like if someone asked me, you know, oh, how do I learn how to how to play the, the saxophone? I, I would say, I don't know. I don't know how. I've never played right. the saxophone. <laughs> but for whatever reason, with love, relationships, business, economy, politics, there are certain religion. There are certain things that everybody seems to have an opinion on when they have no expertise in, in anything. So be very mindful. Yep. I think it's a great piece of advice. Be careful who you're taking advice from and ask yourself that question. One, have they done it? Two, have they shown that they can teach it? Yep, 100% right. That I mean, that's the most important part. When you have those two things in line, you know you're learning from the right person. And the cool thing now is with YouTube, with books, with low ticket courses, there are a lot of people you can learn from. Like I have the nation's industry leading online real estate course for real estate agents at Earth to Orbit. If someone wanted to learn about it, they could go on my YouTube, they can go on the website, they can join a, a free or, or $97 boot camp, something really free or low ticket and decide if I'm the person they want to learn from. Right. Uh, yeah, so it's easier now than ever to do some due diligence on that person because there's a lot of people you can get the blueprint from. You got to get the blueprint from the person you really resonate with. You resonate with their character, how they do business. So it's not like I'm saying go start spending significant amounts of money on someone right away. 
if you're really confident in them, go for it. But most people these days that have a blueprint to take advantage of, there's ways to do your due diligence, find out if you really resonate with this person. But most importantly, when you decide that you do, don't hesitate, take action and start moving. Speaking of that, I want to ask a question about college because there is so much information. I mean, Rob, I'm pretty direct with people. There is no reason in my mind, like you yep. can learn anything. You you really can. There is yep. there is more access to, as long as you have internet, there is more access to information, to courses, to knowledge, people sharing than there ever has been before. There really is zero reason for people. Yep. If you say you want to learn about real estate, you know, or oh, you wish you had more money. There's no wishing. You, if you're not taking any time to educate yourself on these yeah. things that are fully available, I have no sympathy for that. So I'm just curious, a, cl a slight couple minute detour here. What is your view on college these days for people who are, you know, out of high school and yeah. looking to whether harness to skill, learn this stuff? What's your advice for folks from um, from that perspective? Yeah, I think college can be really beneficial. I think the way it's structured in our country, it's more detrimental than anything else. Just my opinion. I think it's unreasonable to expect that a 16 or 17 year old person would have extreme confidence in what they want to do for the rest of their life. And if you look at, let's say the average, I don't know, mid thirties or early forties person, a lot of them are not doing what they majored in. Yeah. And they're spending over the course of their time, statistically like over $200,000 to go to college by the time they're done paying back their loans. I also agree with you that these days it is completely possible to not go to college get an online course, get a coach, go on YouTube, read some books and be extremely successful and lead, lead a life of abundance. Some some fields require a college degree. Like if someone really wants to be a teacher, they have to have an education degree. If someone really wants to be an electrical engineer, I would imagine, or a doctor, you know, or be a lawyer, you have to go to school for those things. But for a lot of things these days, it's not necessary. So I would say if anyone's listening, they happen to be of the college age, if you're not sure, there, I, don't, I, I think it, it would be unwise to take out loans and hook yourself to something that is so um, dominating financially and paying back those loans on something you're not sure about. These days, it's clear college is not necessary. I have an agent on my team. He's 19 years old, got his license right out of high school and engaging with my coaching at 19 years old, within three to four months of being an agent, he's got over $4 million of active listings on the market. Mm -hmm. So he's going to make over $100,000 in his first year of being an agent at 19 years old without going to college. And, you know, my course was $3,000. Right. So <laughs> I mean, that's so, a no-brainer. I, 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 I wholeheartedly agree. I didn't use to my, my view on college has changed. I think college is great for those who are listening of, you know, I have some nieces and nephews. And the best thing for my college experience was independence. I had yeah. to learn how to figure things out, you know, go to class without someone telling me to go to class, manage my time, you know, go get a job, social skills, new people, like the best thing in my advice people can do, take public speaking courses, learn how to engage socially, take a sales and marketing course, it doesn't have to be at college. But if you can't, you know, connect with folks, like I'm sure you're a real estate person who's 19 years old, that person has to have some really high emotional IQ and high social skills. And if you do aren't harnessing those things, you're going to be so far behind people who are really good at that stuff, figuring out how to right. connect with folks, you know, how to, how to engage with you. How do I get people to like me? I mean, these sk these social skills are so underrated um, and a lot of people don't focus on them and they are crucial for success. Yeah. Yeah. There's a um, there's a great show uh, with Sylvester Stallone on Paramount. It's called Tulsa King. And uh, I, even, I think there's a reel going around about it, but I actually watched the show. It's very, very good. But he basically says something along the lines of, you know, the point of going to college is to prove that you can get to places on time. You can learn how to interact with people so that when someone's hiring you, they've learned that you've, you've taken four years to get to places on time without screwing up so that you're not going to ruin their business. Mm -hmm. You know, again, there are some some uh, careers where you have to go to college to learn that thing at a high skill set. And that's very, very important. But I, it's definitely not compulsory in order to be successful the way it used to be, you know, decades ago. Yeah. And if you think about it, so you just talked about investing, you would never go take a loan out to invest 200 grand into a business that you know nothing about. You're not sure you want to do, but you're going to take that money 
And you know what? You know you just yeah. never do that. But that's what pretty much the college education system tells you to do: take all these loans so you can go figure this out, what you want to be doing, and then you're going to have to pay this back with interest. And like it could potentially, but then you're then you're at the mercy of these loans because now right. you have an eight hundred dollar rent payment. Like anyway, it's just it's it's worth questioning. And if you question all of these societal decisions yeah. that have been around for a very long time, that frankly someone is benefiting from. Somebody wants you to go to college because they're on the receiving end of you doing so. That's right. Um, okay, step two. Yeah. So uh, of, of the impossible to fail yeah. framework, again, it really comes down to you get the blueprint, massive action, relentless consistency, and time. Now, once you have the blueprint, or even when the blueprint is in front of you, there is one thing that 100% may be preventing you from engaging with that blueprint and making a decision. Because the only thing that's left is to make a decision. But there's one thing that's preventing that. There's one thing that's prevented you in the past from making a decision. One thing that may prevent you in the future from making a decision, which is fear. And the thing about once you have the opportunity to get the blueprint, which people are so afraid of, is once you know that the last step is to just make a decision, you've run out of excuses and you are now the only X factor. If you have the blueprint, you have the answers, and you still cannot achieve your goals, it's only because you have not worked hard enough or long enough to do it. And people are afraid of that. But the ultimate guarantee in your success is yourself. Mm -hmm. That if you have the right blueprint, it's literally impossible to fail as long as you do the right things in the right order as fast as you can and give it long enough to simmer. Here's a great example. When I became a real estate agent and we had moved to Austin, Texas from New Jersey, brand new agent. There's like 20,000 of us here. Now agents are commission only. And it took me seven months to get my first commission check. I was just figuring it out. I wasn't working any harder in month seven than I was in month one. I just had to grow my skill set. I didn't know how to talk to people. I, you know, I had to learn how to lead generate. And it was about month five. And my wife and I were sitting on the couch in tears, looking at each other saying, what did we do? I was already in entrepreneurship, but my wife was a full-time middle school teacher in New Jersey where we moved from. She was making like 65 grand a year. We had awesome health benefits and we had that consistency and we left all that and removed those golden handcuffs to take commission only jobs and start a real estate company in Texas because we wanted an abundant quality of life, deep meaningful life. And it was really hard. And we were asking ourselves, did we make a mistake? Things were so great and consistent. We left that. Should we quit? Should should we go back to teaching? I said, no. We decided, no, failure is not an option. We are going to do whatever it takes. I have faith in myself. We had faith in ourselves that we were not going to fail. And we just kept going. So in that case, we were taking massive action. We were being relentlessly consistent. We just hadn't given it enough time yet because it takes time. And time is kind of the one X factor you have no control over. Sometimes the universe, you know, God lines things up a little bit quicker. But if you go long enough, you definitely won't fail because failure is only failure if it's permanent. Mm -hmm. A couple weeks after we had that real heart to heart conversation, finally, someone said yes. And then another person said yes. And in my first week of getting paid as an agent, I made almost 50 grand. And then things really took off from there. What if I would have quit? Mm -hmm. What if I would have stopped? What if I didn't give it enough time? What if I was too afraid to keep going? We wouldn't be where we are right now, having a wonderful life, helping agents all over the country achieve the same kind of results. So the fear is the one thing that's really going to stop people. Mm-hmm. Now, well, let's talk about fear because it yeah. is really real. And I love what you said. If you know what to do now, you now you have the formula you, you and you've validated it. You have whatever you need to do to feel like if I do these things, these results will be there. It's it's proven. I've seen it, you know, whatever, whatever. And you're still not doing it. There's a really great example in Mark Manson's book that I want to bring up because uh, it'll resonate with folks. He has this friend who's an artist and, you know, he's always done art on the side. He loves it. And he's been talking about it for years of like going to put his artwork out there, put it for sale, you know, and really make a go at, you know, uh, selling his art and this being his his job and his career. 
Well, he never ends up doing it. And the, 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 at the end of this chapter, the whole point is it's much easier to be an artist that nobody's heard of over an artist that nobody likes. And that's mm-hmm. what kept that guy. I don't even want to put it out there. If I don't put it out there, I'll never know if the world rejected me or not. But if I put it out there and the world rejects me, my dream is dead. And now I'll never have this, you know, pipe dream about being an artist. It's, it's, it goes as simple as like, you know, the girl, the guy you see across from the bar and you're like, oh my gosh, I really want to go talk to them. And you create this story in your head about what your future life might look like and whatever, but you never go actually do it because if they say no, the thought of them saying no, now, now you can never daydream about what, what, about what, about what might have been. And I think that's really fascinating. And, you know, rejection is just like a muscle, Rob. You have to, you have to practice it. Yep. You need to get used to being rejected so it doesn't freaking paralyze you. Yep. Like, go practice it. Go ask somebody for something. Get yep. used to hearing the word no, that it has no impact on your belief system and who you are. Yep. One of my coaches has a great saying. He says, I'm looking for people that are looking for me. Mm. And I love that because when I'm going out and speaking, there might be some people that don't yeah. aren't into it. There might be people on my social media that aren't into it. And that's okay because I'm not looking for those people. But there are people that I'm helping. And those are the people that I'm looking for. And those are the people that that need my help. Right. When, when it comes to fear of, of taking action, fear of the consistency, in my new book coming out entitled Impossible to Fail, I have a chapter called The Four Fears. And there's a great resource. And if you want to download it, you can go to robstein.com backslash fear and download a little document about the four fears. But, you know, fear of failure is something we all know. But I have found it's just, it's too wide and too deep of a term. It's not really specific enough. And I've discovered that when I peel back the layers, there are actually four subcategories that all feed into fear of failure. And the cool thing is, as I lay these out real quick, yeah. that anytime you're, you're having a hesitation of doing something or you're afraid of doing something, I guarantee you it's one or a combination of these fears that's stopping you. And now that I'm going to tell you about it, you'll be able to identify and eliminate it permanently. So take notes or go to robstein.com backslash fear and download the document. The first one is fear of imperfection. A lot of people have this. We've all had it because when we're young, like really young, we have no problem doing new things. As we get older, we have this hesitation to take on things we're not good at. No one wants to do anything they're not good at. Now, I also give some good news for each one of these things. The good news with fear of imperfection is it's actually impossible to be perfect in anything when you get started because mastery is only achieved through repetition. So for example, right, I'm not a basketball player, but if I decided to get good at basketball and I said, I'm just going to research basketball, but I'm, I, wanted to, I want to know I'm going to be perfect at it. So I'm not going to actually step foot on the court until I know for sure the ball is going to go through the net every time. Most anyone would say that's nonsense and that's not how you get good at basketball. But when it comes to starting a task, maybe it's starting a social media channel. Maybe it's engaging in a new career and you got to go talk to people and have a sales call for the first time. People are really hesitant to do it. Now, yeah, I think it's important to note that perfection at certain skills is possible. When I'm speaking, I'll commonly ask, is perfection at a certain task possible? And most people say no. But let's have a delineation here. I don't think there's anything possible like being the perfect person. But when it comes to executing specific tasks with perfection, that is possible over time. You only need to look at some old footage of Michael Jordan playing basketball. He'll have the perfect shot. If you're in sales over time, At some point, you're going to have the perfect appointment. You're going to have the perfect deal that was smooth sailing, literally couldn't have gone any better. When I was playing trumpet professionally, there were times we'd have a gig and I'd finish a song and be like, you know what? That song was perfect. I couldn't have played it any better. They weren't all like that. Yeah. But it happened. But it was only after a lot of experience to get there. So the truth is that if you really cared about being perfect at something, you would take action right away. Because you realize the only way to get really good at something is to do it. So when people tell me, you know, Rob, I'm, I'm going to wait because I'm a perfectionist. What their actions are really saying is I'm a procrastinator. Yeah. yeah. And they're using procrastination as a way to validate 
or excuse me, perfection as a way to validate not taking action. But the truth is, gang, you can only get really good at something by doing it a lot. And so don't be hesitant to get started because if you really want to get perfect at something, start now. Get in those reps because that's the only way to do it. Yeah. And it's also people look at other people and they just think they've always been that good. And it's like, right. no, nope. st st stop victimizing. And I love that what you said. Oh, I, I just want to be perfect. Well, that's you're using you're trying to use a euphemism in a way to make excuses why you're not willing to why you're not willing to to, to try or even go yeah. out and do it. But yeah. yeah, I mean, for goodness sakes, everybody I say this too about entrepreneurs, my like, guys. Anybody that you see that you admire, whether it's how they built their wealth, how they've harnessed a skill, athlete, whatever, they had a day one. Yep. They had a day one of investing, of shooting a basketball, of you know, painting a picture, you name it. Everybody had a day one. And the only way you get better is by having a day two, a day three, and a day 10,426. <laughs> That's right. That's 100% right. I mean, my first you know, my first open house as a real estate agent was terrible. I was saying all the wrong things, doing all the wrong things. My first appointment wasn't that great. But, you know, now I have an extremely high closing rate because of all the no's right, that right. I got before. So that's fear of imperfection. The next one is fear of the unknown. Now, fear of the unknown is actually a survival mechanism built into our DNA. Our hunter-gatherer ancestors had to fear the unknown, right? They're out hunting to eat, there's maybe some movement in a bush. Maybe it's a lion. Maybe it's a bear. Maybe it's the wind. That fear of the unknown kept a lot of people alive. Yeah. So we probably wouldn't be here if there wasn't a certain healthy fear of the unknown. But the really cool thing is, and the good news for this one, is that it is within the human spirit to fear the unknown, but conquer it anyway. Right? Humans used to be on one continent. Now we've inhabited the earth. At some point, there was a human that built a ship and was the first person to conquer the unknown of the ocean, right? You and I fly around the country doing our thing because the Wright brothers conquered the unknown of the fear of flight. So it's possible to fear the unknown, but still conquer it. So if there's something like when I started my YouTube channel and getting heavy on social a few years ago, I was very hesitant to do it because it was all new to me. The cameras, the technology, the all the different aspects, it was very overwhelming, but I just did it. I just followed the blueprint and I did it. And then it's not that scary. And then it's not the unknown anymore. So rest assured yeah. that if there's anything that you want to do, but you're afraid to do it because it's just new to you, it is within you as a human being to conquer that fear of the unknown. Well, and I want to give another little advice on that because again, it's, it's totally true. Guys, you can actually work on this fear and your it doesn't have to be this massive thing. And I'll give you, you an example of my own life. I moved away to college right after high school. So mm -hmm. I went to a brand new school. I had a brand new roommate and I, I didn't know anybody. I had to meet all these new people that I had never met before. There's t I, I joined a PR club that I've never been involved, like all these little tiny things. And then I was like, OK, cool. I want to go to graduate school. Mm, I moved. I moved once. So like I want to go to D.C., it was way less scary the second time. So I, I picked up and moved to D.C., had another new roommate. N you know, I had to figure out how to use the metro system. So all these little things that we do in areas of our life, when it comes time, people ask me what about like, oh, my God, Anne, how did you have the, the guts to start back on my feet? And I'm like, I had been practicing for the last 10 years of my life of all the decisions that I had made that seemed small, yeah. you know, to, to as compared to this. But it wasn't my first really big decision of the unknown. I literally had hundreds of additional things that I'm like, I'm going to go to American University. I have, I've never been there before. Uh, I'm going to see how it goes. So you can practice those. Like, go, like uh, Even Rob is like going to a new restaurant, order a new food that you've never tried yeah. before. These are reps. They are not as big as like starting a company, but they are reps that are really important to train the brain that you can do things you've never done before. 100% right. Absolutely. And we all have things that at one point were unknown to us. So don't forget that you've already done that before and had yeah. success with it. So fear of imperfection, fear of the unknown. Number three is fear of judgment. And this is another survival mechanism built into our instincts. Because again, when we go back to our hunter-gatherer days, 
we had to survive in a tribe. So we had to be able to get along with other people and kind of be afraid that people might not like us because if, if our tribes didn't get along with us, they would either kill us or leave us stranded, in which case we couldn't survive. Now, I do want to be clear. I'm not saying don't ever care what people think. You need to be able to get along with people to have good relationships to, to in business and to lead a fulfilling life. But ultimately, when people fear judgment, they're fearing the judgment of people that they don't know and do not know them. Ed Milet is a very uh, incredible entrepreneur, speaker, author. I admire him greatly. He has a phrase that he calls these people the extras, right? The people in the movies that don't even get names in the credits, taxi driver one, right? Bartender two. These are the people that you're so worried about the judgment of. But the thing is that people are so worried about thinking about themselves or not even thinking about you. You have had, or the, when I say you, I just mean the listener. You've had probably a dozen encounters over the past day or two with people that are worried about what you're going to think and you don't even remember their faces. Mm -hmm. There are people somewhere on this planet that are not taking action because they're worried about what you're going to think and you don't even know who they are, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So the only judgment that should even matter or maybe family, friends, loved one, but again, even take that with a grain of salt because if you tell your parents who have been W-2 employees their whole life that you're going to start a business, they might have some false judgment on you, right? So be confident in your decisions, but don't fear the judgment of others because the vast majority of people that you're so afraid of their judgment don't even know you. They don't contribute to your life in any way, and they're not going to help you. So just take the action that is necessary. And again, I'll go back to my when I was starting my social channels and really becoming more prominent on social media, I had fear of the unknown and fear of judgment. The whole thing was new to me. And I was worried about what other people are going to say. But again, I'm looking for people that find value in what I have to offer. And if people don't find value in what I have to offer, that's cool. Don't waste your time complaining about it. Don't waste my time having to listen to it. Just like move on, <laughs> do yeah. your thing. I just want to focus on the people I can help. Yeah. And guys, listen, they're going to judge you either way. That's yeah. the reality of it. We, you know, we're going to, anytime we come in contact with somebody, you know, our brains work like that. We're making a split judgment about what that person is wearing. Do we like their hair? Are they attractive? Do we like their style? Their life? I mean, it's, it's happening all the time. And then you go on to the next person and it happens there. So it's not even, a, it's not even personal. And I've just found like, it's like, no matter what you do, someone's going to judge it. So you might as well do what you want to do. That's a hard message. Yeah, yeah. The, right. Like you can please some of the people all the time, all the people some of the time, but you can never please anybody all the time. And if you're trying to, you know, one, you don't you don't have a brand or personality in my mind. Right. Like we shouldn't be able to be or appeal or appease. It's like I hate companies who say we're for everybody. That just makes me roll my eyes because that's just an impossible brand position to take and, you know, define who you are. And that's right. It, it's a it's a powerful place to step into of when you get so confident in your values and your belief systems and your talents and your offerings and what you bring to the table and like don't focus on on anything else it's it's yeah, yeah. anyway yeah. I, I mean wherever people might be at with you know god the universe however they look at it i personally believe god has created all of us with amazing potential and if you have talents you have passion you are obligated to take action on it. And if you're halting taking action on it because you're worried about what some people might think you are doing the world a disservice. You're doing yourself a disservice because you're not going to maximize your God-given potential. And there are so many people that you could benefit that you're not benefiting right now. And you owe it to yourself and to them to take action. Yeah. And just think about, I mean, again, we've heard it how many times, Rob, when people get to their end of their life and it's like what's yeah. the what they, they have regrets about the things they never did that they yep. never tried that they yes. wish they would have you know attempted Th those are th those are where regrets come in and when you pass you know oh my gosh now i'm in my 60s and my body isn't the same as it used to be and i can no longer do these certain things i mean yeah like fa failure is a much easier pill to swallow than regret i tell you what yep, yep that's 100 percent right and so the last one we have fear of imperfection, fear of the unknown, fear of judgment. The last one, biggest one, fear of sacrifice. This is what will stop most people, the sacrifice that is necessary to accomplish your goals. It is 
free to want, but it is not free to have. So whatever your That's goal might great, be. That is a great thing. Guys, listen to that you. again. It's, yeah, it's, it's free to want because everybody can. Oh, I want, I want, we vision. But to actually get it, there's a lot of things you've got to give up yeah. to get to that, to that point, whatever yeah. that might be for you. Yep. Yeah. It is not free to have. To have something, you must pay the price. And the price tag is sacrifice. Now, if you were to imagine that every goal you have is a price tag, the more significant goal it is and the further you are from it, remember, every goal you have is completely achievable, but it will require a higher price. So for example, as a real estate coach or real estate agent, if my goal is to close another, if I'm already closing deals and I'm trying to close another one deal a month, okay, that's a pretty low price tag. Like I could tweak some things and figure it out. But when I transitioned from a middle school teacher to a top producing real estate agent, those in a new state, those two things are way different. There was a very high price tag in sacrifice I had to pay in order to accomplish that goal. And most people are simply not willing to make the sacrifices. They're not willing to take the short-term sacrifices for the long-term gains. But remember, gang, it's it's not forever. It's not forever that you're going to do this. There is no way around the fact that even with the right blueprint, I'm very transparent with the real estate agents that take my course Earth to Orbit. Look, this is guaranteed the blueprint that's going to get you to achieve success, but I can't do the work for you. Yeah, It's still going to take some work, but you know what? You do this thing for 12, 18, 24 months, you will have such a consistent, amazing quality of life that you never thought possible, but you're going to have to get into orbit. You're going to have to go through that launching phase and there's no way around it. People have to be willing to make the sacrifice. When I was doing competitive bodybuilding, it takes a lot of sacrifice. Six months of prepping, weighing the food. <laughs> I had, before one of my shows, I had my best friend, my childhood best friend's wedding. It was a week before my show. Now I was, of course, starving, mm -hmm. depleted. Hormones are all wacky because my body is going into like starvation mode. I go to a wedding, open bar, amazing food, right? Desserts are incredible. And I brought my cooler of cold chicken and vegetables and a little tiny baked potato. And the servers are coming up to me asking me what I ordered. Did you order the chicken, the the steak, the fish? I said, no, I, I brought my own. And everyone's toasting with champagne and I have my, my water jug. And everyone's eating cake. And I'm just staring at the cake, probably looking pretty pissed off. But I didn't eat any, right? Now, because I had a goal. The next weekend, I won my show, mm -hmm. right? It was worth it because what if I would have broken my diet, lost the show? I would have traded something I was working so hard for for a short-term temporary dopamine fix that actually would have taken me further from my goals. There were many times when I was building my real estate career. I, I didn't take a day off for six months. I wanted to, but I wanted my success more than I wanted temporary convenience. But now I'm able to you know, have more control of my schedule. So the fear of sacrifice simply means that most people aren't willing to do what it takes. One of the reasons the vast majority of small businesses fail is people don't get the education and they don't work hard enough. And people might say, well, I'm working hard and I'm not doubting that, but you might not be working hard enough to take the short-term sacrifice to get what you want. If you can overcome those fears, guaranteed it is impossible to fail. Yeah. And Rob, I think it's really important that people stop whenever I talk or coach or mentor folks on these things. I do ask that question and I say, do you want it bad enough? And you and and sometimes the answer might be no. And that's OK, because I'll tell you what, if you don't enjoy weighing your food and, you know, working out and knowing that what you're driving or if you don't enjoy that process, at least knowing that like this is worth it for me, it's really easy to to give up or to quit. And I always get permission for people to be like, if the answer is no, then stop doing it because yeah. you're never going to get there. And then you're yeah. going to continue to feel bad. You know, again, I, when I when I sold Solid Core a couple of months ago, I talked to my team in front of, and I said that I'm like, this day would be so meaningless if I didn't enjoy Every single phase of this from coach from when I first opened that company, coaching at 5 a.m. in the morning, you know, I'd coach 20 classes a week, go home and respond to client emails, run payroll, opening up studios, 
you know, hiring people, yeah. the graduation, and yeah. constantly, I I loved being in those studios. And I tell people, I mean, people probably heard me a million times on this show already say this, but think about your actual day to day because it's not just Super Bowl Sunday. You want to get to Super Bowl Sunday, you got it. It's it's Monday through Saturday, yeah. day and morning and night, and you better love practicing. You better love training. You better love sleeping, recovery. Yeah. That's the only way you're getting to Super Bowl Sunday. Hundred percent. And sometimes, realistically, I'm I'm sure this may have, this happened to you at some points. So I know it still happens to me. There might be sometimes during that Monday through Saturday, you know, you're tired, you're stressed, and maybe you don't necessarily feel like doing the things you're supposed to do. But the truth is, you don't always need to be passionate about what you're doing, but you do need to be passionate about why you're doing it, because in the rare instance. Now, uh, now the majority of the time you should be passionate about both, but I think it's inevitable that sometimes you're not going to be extremely passionate about what you have to do in that moment. But if your why is strong enough, that is what pushes you through. I mean, again, when I go back to competitive bodybuilding, typically when you look on stage, the person that looks the best has suffered the most mm -hmm. because we're getting way leaner than our bodies are meant to be. Our bodies literally think we're starving. They start like shutting down. Your hormones get wacky. You kind of go into this like weird depressive funk for a little while. And for sure, I did not feel every day like doing an hour and a half cardio and doing yeah. weights and weighing my food. But I was passionate about why I was doing it. And that is what allowed me to achieve and accomplish my goals. Mm -hmm. And I think today in society, especially in large part because of social media, for sure, we have this misconception that we're always supposed to be motivated and never face any adversity. Because like you said, Anne, you might look at someone that is accomplishing crazy success and you imagine they go through their day with no stress and no obstacles and always feeling motivated. And I'm sure a lot of times that's the truth, but in other times they might not be feeling specifically motivated. And there are obstacles. The only difference is they keep taking action. Mm -hmm. Whether they feel like it or not, they keep taking action. And the cool thing is that once you start getting the results, that's when you do start feeling more motivated. You know, success that. is a habit. A successful lifestyle is a habit. Yeah. And I and and it's the positive feedback loop. I mean, to go to your second thing about time, right? Like that's why it's like get the if you, if you have the blueprint and then you give yourself time. I just had a friend who lost 65 pounds also and it was like the first the second week it's like, "Oh my god, I'm down 7 pounds." Positive feedback loop. Keep yeah. doing what I'm doing. It's working. And we need, whether it's getting in better at a new skill, you know, I play a lot of volleyball and like the progress of like, holy shit, I'm, I, I'm, I can play with these people. Yeah. Now I just want to get better. Like, it's really important to see those little points of, of progress, whether it's getting yeah. better at managing people, you know, doing something, but the positive feedback loop and celebrating the little wins along the way yes. is what keeps you motivated too. Yeah. Results are the most addictive part to success. Yeah. I usually say that, you know, habits start out as disciplined decisions. When I am speaking and I ask people, what do you think of a habit? The answers are always the things you do repetitively on autopilot without thinking about it. Now, to be successful at anything, the people that are very consistently successful have developed certain habits that they do every day. So for example, again, training and nutrition, I work out every day. I, I, weigh, I weigh my food every day. It's, I, I eat this. I don't eat certain things every day. I eat certain things every day. Those things are habits. But when I started doing it, it wasn't a habit. Mm -hmm. It was a disciplined decision. But the cool thing was one day when I look in the mirror and look on the scale and say, hey, I'm getting new results I've never had before. Q and positive feedback loop. Now I'm starting to get motivated to instill these habits. Yeah. Because, you know, discipline, we typically think of discipline as doing something we don't want to do. Just like being courageous is taking action in the presence of fear. If there's no fear, then it, it's kind of just excitement, right? So discipline, you may not feel like doing it, but once you start getting those results, that's when the motivation really kicks into high gear. And when you go from, all right, I don't want to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway to, okay, now I'm really excited mm -hmm. to do this. And the cool thing is when you have that blueprint in times when you're like, is this working or not? You can rest assured, yes, because I'm following the blueprint and now I just need to wait until I really start getting these results. And it's not going to take that long mm -hmm. if you have the right blueprint and you're implementing it correctly. 
Yeah, you, you said something that reminded me of, you know, the, a lot of people out there want to debate certain things of like, oh, it's not the it's not the why, it's the how. It's not the how, it's the why. And I'm like, guys, oftentimes it's both. Totally. You, you, you know, like you need to have both. You need to yeah. understand why you're working so hard and you need yep. to know how, how you're how you're going to do it to get to where you need to be. For example, yep. Rob, in the beginning of this podcast, you mentioned you and your wife, I'm sure, sat down and said, we don't want a life where we're getting a paycheck every two weeks and our income is limited. And yeah. That's not going to work for us. Right. We want a life of abundance and, and you've defined that. So that got really motivating for like, this is the why. And we're not going to get there by continuing to be teachers. So that's something right. has to change. What path do we need to create for ourselves? And so it's constantly re reminding that. And again, guys in more validation, I had the same with, with Salicor. I wanted to build a really big business, but I didn't want to go sell post-it notes. There's no way I was going to be excited and give a shit about selling people post-it notes. <laughs> but what I am passionate about is health and fitness and community. Yep. So once I found that, like, oh my gosh, there's that and I can build and scale it. And I want to build a life of like, you know, A plus, A plus, A plus. I'm going for it. I have found something that I think I can really win at and enjoy along the way. Absolutely. What um, can you just tell me? As we're coming up on our time. Is there something you can think of, Rob, that you started and were like, you know what? I don't want this anymore. Just because I think it's an important thing for people to hear. Sometimes we think, yeah. well, I said I was going to do it, so I'm going to do it. And I'm like, sometimes it's good to call it and be like, yeah. you know what? I thought I was really interested in this. And it turns out I don't really care as much. 100%. Yeah. Uh, I kind of hit on it briefly, but I'll expand on it. Um, running mm. for, for me. Uh, was was the thing that I that th that was that thing for me. So my aha moment, you know, I, I grew up fat. I kind of lost some baby weight, but I was always kind of pudgy. And then after college, I was very busy, but I was very sedentary. So I was, you know, standing still teaching and then driving somewhere to speak and then I'd stand and speak. So I was just very sedentary. I was eating out fast food, all sorts of stuff. So eventually one day I'm in my room and I'm I'm try I'm wrestling with this belt that I used to wear like numerous loops in. And then now it's three loops in, two loops in, one loop in. So now I'm like wrestling with this belt, breaking a sweat, sucking in my gut. I finally get the belt on and exhale a sigh of relief. And the belt buckle actually popped off, flew across the room and made a hole in the wall. What? That actually happened. So that was my, wow, I must be really out of shape moment, something's got to change. Now, I had never gotten into fitness, eating. I had no idea what to do. So I said, I'm going to get into running because that that's what people do when you leave. It was a completely uneducated decision. Yeah. And I went online and I downloaded a marathon training program. I'm going to run a marathon. That's an epic thing to do. And if I could run a marathon for sure, I'm going to get into shape. And I got decent at running. I could run about 11 to 12 miles over time. I wasn't very fast, but I could do it. And I just really hated it. I really, really hated it. But I just kept trying to do it. I did lose a little bit of weight, but I really didn't like how I looked. I was just losing a little bit of weight, but I didn't enjoy the activity. And then one day, it was very cold. We were still in New Jersey. And I was like, all right, discipline. I'm going to run. It was snowing. It was like 20 degrees out. And I got about 30 seconds outside of my house. It's freezing. My chest hurts. And I said, this sucks. I quit. I quit running. I just, I hate it. I'm making myself miserable. There's nothing enjoyable about this. I'm going to stop. That same night when I was watching TV is when I saw the P90X infomercial for like the umpteenth time and said, I'm going to try that. Yeah. And I loved it and it worked and it was the catalyst that led to my passion for health and fitness and bodybuilding and, and all that. So, you know, for me, that was it. And I really gave but it a never, good go. You, never lost your, you wanted to lose weight. It's just right. this weight isn't working. That's I'm right. I'm going to try a different. It, it isn't like I'm just not going to try anything else. That's right. right. Exactly. So it's like, guys, there's there's 29 different ways. There's so many ways to do and achieve something. Yep. So it's like, just because one way doesn't work, doesn't mean that it's not possible for you. Like you have to try the second way, try the third. My boyfriend has a great saying. It's like, you haven't tried everything. You've just tried everything you can think of. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. And the cool thing is, you know, 
pretty much everyone out there, whatever it is you're trying to do has been done before. Yeah. You know, unless you're trying to invent like a teleportation machine machine or something like it's been done. So there's a way to do it. You know, it's just you haven't figured. And for some people, maybe running is the thing. I talk to people that are like, I love running. I can't stand lifting weights the way you do, Rob. And I'm like, cool, don't lift weights. <laughs> like That's fine. But yeah. I found my passion. And and sometimes you got to figure out what doesn't work to ultimately lead you to to what does work. Yeah. Rob, this has been so insightful. And again, I love just breaking it down. People get so overwhelmed and thinking how they're going to achieve whatever. And it's like, you got three simple steps here to follow, you know, and the first one's so important is again, don't, don't start without knowing what you're, you're doing. You would never set out to go sail without knowing where, if you're trying to get somewhere, having a map to where you're going is, is the best way that you're going to succeed on the first one. So I, I, I really like number one a lot. Um, where can where can people find you learn more if they're like, gosh, I really want to get more involved in, you know, real estate. I know you have a couple of books. What's the best way for people to learn from you? Yeah. I mean, for sure, uh, just going to robstein.com, S T E I N. That's my website. All my info is on there. Um, and everything is an extension of that. My YouTube is robstein.tv. You can find me on Instagram or Facebook using the uh, Robstein Impossible to Fail handle. Um if you're a real estate agent, check out my training course at earth to orbit training.com. And if you were listening to this uh, podcast and you want to get that fear document, again, it's robsign.com backslash fear. You can download that document summarizing the four fears. And that's going to be helpful because truly, anytime you're facing a hesitation, think about which one of those four fears are getting in your way. You can crush that fear every time and accomplish your goals. And that's fear of imperfection, fear of unknown, fear of judgment, fear of the sacrifice. That's right. Yeah. See, I even took notes, you guys. Yes, you did. <laughs> uh, Rob, thank you so much. Pleasure to see you. Thanks for spending some time with us today. And uh, hopefully a lot of people learned a lot of things and will move to taking some action on going for what it is they want with their life. Right on. Thank you so much for having me. And it's been a blast.